just whose call it is about whether or not Deshaun Watson plays or doesn't play. My only response to that is, are you stinking kidding me? Let's talk about it. Your latest Locked On Browns starts now. You are Locked On Browns, your daily Cleveland Browns podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends, your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound, LGB on the LOB, the Lockdown Browns podcast, brought to the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Jeff Lloyd. We appreciate all of you who make Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. To the everyday crowd, you guys are fantastic. We need more of you. First time here, hit the subscribe button on YouTube and make sure you become an everydayer. You will not be disappointed. The show is always available. It's always free wherever you get your podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Over the last day or so, two days now, we're hearing a lot about whether or not you know Kevin Stefanski has the ability to pull. Deshaun Watson from being the starting quarterback of the Cleveland Browns. You're hearing it through certain you know, media members, prominent media members. And we all kind of get how this goes. You know, you kind of know the media members that are, you know, funneling the information that they're getting maybe through ownership. Paul D. Podesta, even you're getting it from certain media members that may have you know, their information from Andrew Barry, certainly media members, you know, that are coming from the side of coach Kevin Stefanski. And this is where, you know, you kind of get nervous about, you know, understanding how bad things can be all right now about where things are. Look, Jimmy Haslam to his credit has found a way to kind of backseat himself and be a traditional NFL owner. And we did lots of episodes on this and giving, you know, Jimmy credit for just understanding that, you know, he is a billionaire businessman and that is fantastic. And all, you know, all the congrats in the world on him, on the success that he has had, doesn't mean he understands the day-to-day runnings of a football team, let alone an NFL football team. So, you know, is it Jimmy's call? It most certainly shouldn't be. Um, Andrew Berry is a guy that I have backed for years and I will continue to back. I think Andrew Berry does great work. I know a lot of people, you know, when the team is not successful, that's, you know, one of the way, one of the way, uh, one of the areas they want to point their finger at it doesn't work for me. You know, Rome wasn't built in a day, you know, we'll never know the true answer of who was the driving force behind getting Deshaun Watson here. All of them seem to have had their hand in there, whether it was Andrew, Jimmy, I'm sorry, Andrew and Kevin. I'm sure it was Jimmy because it was Jimmy's $230 million that got it done in a guaranteed contract. It was Andrew who, you know, made it work with the Houston Texans as opposed to appropriate compensation. Kevin is kind of the guy that just does the day-to-day stuff and keeps this team going and, handles it through game day. But if Kevin Stefanski is the head coach of a team that has been in the playoffs two times in the last four years, something that this Cleveland Browns team had not done in a long, long time. If Kevin Stefanski is a two-time NFL coach of the year, it is Kevin Stefanski's call. And I think you get more and more when you see these games And you see, you know, and look, you hate to use body language, obviously, but you see the growing amount of frustration on Coach Kevin Stefanski's face. There are plays that are called that should be resulting in two yards, certainly resulting in touchdowns, that are just not getting there. You see a frustrated Coach Kevin Stefanski. Um, Also, if you look at Coach Kevin Stefanski, If you ever looked at like, you know, Barack Obama, you know, from like the beginning of his days 
of entering the White House as opposed to him leaving the White House. The man looked like he aged 60 years and eight years. Well, Kevin Stefanski in year five kind of looks like <laughs> Kevin Stefanski is now the father of the guy who started coaching this team in 2020. He's aged. He has aged a lot. There's been a lot of stress. Um, I remember an old Bill Parcells back in the day, and this was kind of what happened, you know, when he was in New England and why he ended up leaving, leaving New England. And I'm not saying this is necessarily the path for Kevin Stefanski here in Cleveland. And I'm not saying he wants to be the guy who also is a pseudo GM. But, you know, Bill Parcells basically stated that, you know, if I'm the one making the dinner, I want some hand and a voice in picking the groceries. These wins and losses hang on Kevin Stefanski. He's the one that has a record here. There is no record for Andrew Berry. There certainly is no record for Jimmy Haslam. So if Kevin Stefanski feels he cannot win, let's be honest, can't even compete with Deshaun Watson as the starting quarterback, at the end of the day, it's his call. It is his call. You can do whatever you want at this point. And look, I'm not saying Deshaun Watson is on the side of the road, dead, buried, NFL career-wise for the rest of his life. I'm not saying that. But I am saying that he is so broken right now, you're turning the key and the engine ain't giving you nothing. Nothing's coming from it. Kevin Stefanski is playing for the other is coaching for the other 52 guys in that locker room. Kevin Stefanski is coaching for himself. Kevin Stefanski is a damn good football coach. We've seen some great things happen with this team with not so great talent early in the regime in 2020, 21, 22, some games won with Jacoby Brissett. Last year, that magical ride with, you know, name whatever quarterback started whichever week. But this is ridiculous at this point. Deshaun Watson needs to be benched. And the fact that it's not even a universal decision is even more embarrassing. But Kevin Stefanski needs to be able to look his owner in the eye and his general manager in the eye and say, I have to do what is best for this football team today, tomorrow, in the future. As an owner, as a general manager, you put a lot of faith in Coach Kevin Stefanski. Andrew hired him. They gave him a contract. Not only that, they gave him a contract extension. If Kevin Stefanski says, He's not my quarterback. He's not your quarterback. Andrew Berry can go face the media. Jimmy Haslam can go face the media. Kevin Stefanski is doing his job, and he needs to do what is best for his team, which is pulling the quarterback and starting Jameis Winston Sunday against Philadelphia Eagles. We're going to continue into this. Browns, a lot of roster moves coming. There's going to be some turnover. Busy, busy week probably for them as a lot of guys are eligible to come back from injured reserve. We're going to talk about all that. Your latest Lockdown Browns continues. Thanks for everybody for being here. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, -play, and so much more on the same page where you place your bets. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. We all went to school, right? We all had a path. We all did what we wanted to do, right? But now we're older. We're mature. Is there something you wanted to learn or are you a vastly different person than you were when you were 18 years old and you first went off to college? Our sponsor, Hillsdale College, is offering more than 40 free, that's right, free online courses, including Construction 101. Hey, you're a homeowner. Why don't you try a way to save yourself some money? Introduction to Free Market Economics, The Great American Story, A Land of Hope, and a brand new documentary style course on Marxism, Socialism, and communism. All of Hillsdale's courses are self-paced so that you can start whenever and tune in whenever. Plus, you can go deeper with readings, quizzes, discussions, or just enjoy the lectures. We all want to be stimulated, right? Go right now to Hillsdale 
hills.edu slash locked on to enroll. There's no cost and it's easy to get started. That's hillsdale.edu slash locked on to register. Hillsdale.edu slash locked on. I'm your host, Jeff Lloyd. We appreciate you all for making Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. The everyday crowd, the guys are great. The crew is great. The guys, the gals, the kids, you need to be part of it. And it might be a different transition the way this show goes here if the Browns can't pick it up. So you want to get all your information. You want to get it here. Subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. And the show is always available. It is always free wherever you get your podcasts. Now, as I was saying, as we you know, rolled into the break here, um, Browns, some moves today. They have released from the 53-man roster, Blake Whitehart, 20% of the receiving touchdowns at this point for the Cleveland Browns. Blake Whitehart, released. Sam Kamara, released. Offensive lineman JV and Cohen, released. From the practice squad, Michael Barrett, Royce Freeman, Ricky Lee. Now, with so much action and turnover, who's coming in? Well... We should get our first game, regular season game week of second round pick, Mike Hall, defensive tackle out of Ohio State, Streetsboro, Ohio, originally. So Mike Hall should be coming back into the fold, as we know. But then there are a slew of players who are now becoming in line to return from injury. Juan Thornhill, Maurice Hurst, Tony Fields, Mahmoud Diabate, Nick Chubb. Naheem Hines. There's a lot of turnover coming here. And it's certainly going to be an awkward position for a lot of these guys to come into because a lot of them have just been spectators here as this team has just been bad, bad over a three-game losing streak. But hopefully some of these guys are coming in here with a different perspective, a different mindset, you know, more of the, hey, it stunk I wasn't here. And I feel bad I wasn't here with my guys and my brothers. And I'm more needed now than I ever was. So these guys might come in a little rejuvenated. And I got to be honest, it's probably what this team in this locker room needs right now. This team is in the pits of all pits. And you think about what's going on in the NFL. I mean, New York Jets just fired Robert Saylor, Sala, two and three. You know, Jets are playing. The Jets' next game is a conference game that could put them in first place. But yet, they were so frustrated as an ownership group with the way this team is performing to this point that they fired their head coach. And if you noticed, and this is one of the things that I've kind of been talking about, is who are you listening to? And when you heard Woody Johnson speak, one of the things Woody Johnson, New York Jets owner, when Woody Johnson spoke, one of the things that he mentioned is, is I'm all right with Jeff Ulbrich, Jets current defensive coordinator, now injured mad coach running this team is because when Jeff speaks, people listen. And that's where you're really at with a situation with Coach Stefanski right now. If Coach Stefanski, and look, I think there's a lot of guys who won't say it publicly. But if you caught them behind the scenes, hey, should Jameis Winston at least deserve one start? I think you'd have a lot more yeses than you'd have noes. But if you have Coach Stefanski up there making decisions based on what ownership and front office want, if you guys aren't going to listen to Coach Kevin Stefanski, What makes you think the guys who play between the white lines, put on the pads, strap on the helmets, and put the mouthpieces in are going to listen to their head coach? This is where it becomes a serious, serious issue. If the guys who should value Coach Kevin Stefanski more than anybody else, ownership, front office, If they don't value him that way, then nobody is going to. And it sets yourself up for a really, really ugly situation. Now, 
as these guys start coming in. And it's going to be interesting because we have, we know we're waiting on testing results on several players. And David Njoku, certainly one of them. Denzel Ward, certainly another one of them. Ethan Posick, certainly another one. So again, these Brown, the Browns are in this weird scope of each week. It's, you know, three guys out, one in. The next week, two guys in. Oh, wait, but they didn't play yet, like the offensive tackles. So you got coach who was just trying to navigate this team. And in the NFL, it's essentially a Wednesday to Sunday. It really is. It's Wednesday to Sunday. You know, Monday you do your pressers. You check on your guys. All right, get your rest. We'll see you all Wednesday because Tuesday nothing goes on in the NFL. But it's really, really hard in, you know, a, a good practice on Wednesday, a little bit lighter practice on Thursday, a, a walkthrough at best on Friday. It is really hard to get your NFL team prepared to play on Sunday where you have that amount of limited time. Now, factor into it, and you guys know I've been harping on this for weeks now, is we get to Friday and they leave the practice fields Friday and they still don't know things like who their offensive line is going to be. This is a really difficult situation. And again, playing Jameis just for the sake of a change, for the sake of change, yeah, it's the right move. Because we already know in a short time that Jameis Winston has been here, how he's felt by his teammates, how he's felt by this city. He's out doing a lot of media appearances, you know, probably getting more opportunities than the franchise quarterback who makes a boatload of money. And part of that is we know the reasons why, of course, you know, you can't change that. You bought into it. You accepted it. You tried to be okay with it, even though maybe your city and your fan base necessarily wasn't. But the question is, will the other 52 guys play harder for Jameis Winston than they will for Deshaun Watson? And I don't know where they are yet, and we certainly don't have the information. But you have to believe at one in four, headed into week six in Philly, a team that's coming off a bye, should be fresh, should be healthy, getting some of the top playmakers back at two and two, are ready to go and are ready to go try to make their run in their own division. And they've had not one, but two weeks to prepare for the Cleveland Browns. So if that's the case, you got to do whatever you think is your best chance to win. And what do we know from this point? Number four is not your best chance to win. I don't know that Jameis Winston is your best chance to win, but I'll put my money on the blind hold card that this team will play and perform better with Jameis Winston as a quarterback, as opposed to what they have to this point with Deshaun Watson. It's not working in any way whatsoever. Make the change, Kevin and Jimmy and Andrew. Let him make the change. It's his team. It's his name. It's his record. Let the man do what he's got to do. We're to continue here on Locked On Browns. Appreciate you all for being along for the ride. Look, it's a time of year, you know, the nights are shorter, but you know what? We can start transcending into indoor activities. We can go check out our favorite musicians, bands, actors and actresses, and you should use Game Time. They have a new feature called Game Time Picks that makes getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out all the stuff, all the fluff to show you. Only incredible deals on great seats, so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands and thousands of tickets. You can get the super deal, and it is fantastic, and it gets you everything you want, as opposed to spending 45 minutes and watching and going through apps where the money just goes on and on and on. Game time picks. The curation makes it easier to save more on sports, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. I suggest you put in the all-in price toggling option. This way, you don't go window to window to window, and all of a sudden the prices get higher and higher. There's no BS. There's no fluff with game time. This is the price. Do you want to buy it? Go ahead. Click. 
you get a panoramic view from your seat in the app before you buy. Lowest price guarantee, your game time will credit you 110%, 110% of the difference. Your purchase is covered with the best game time ticket coverage offering. It's the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code Lockdown NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account code, account and redeem code L O C K E D O N F L for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? Game Time. Jeff Lloyd, your latest Lockdown Browns continues. Appreciate all of you who make Lockdown Browns your first listen every single day. If you are not part of the everyday crowd by now, well, get on the bus, Gus, and subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. The show is always available. It is always free wherever you get your podcasts. Certainly, it's covered here. Whose call is it? Because if it's not Kevin Stefanski's call, that is a major problem on whether or not a quarterback change needs to be had. Browns are going to have a whole bunch of players start to come back to the 53-man roster. They made moves today, releasing three guys from the 53, releasing three guys from the practice squad. The hope there is the guys released from the 53 can find their way on to the practice squad. It's back to basics at one and four. When I say back to basics, I'm talking the simplicity of simplicity. Tackling. This team is not good at all. A lot of it has to do to how their pursuit angles are, how they get after ball carriers, how they get after receivers. Because even last year when they missed tackles, you always had a buddy with you. Not only was there one hat to the football, there was usually two and three. So even if it was a shortcut, you overran it by just a smidge. Guys were right behind you. So you didn't give up a yard off your lost tackle. There was gang tackling, one, two, three hats, taking down one ball carrier at the same time. That is not things we're seeing right now. And you see things like, well, oh, if JOK doesn't make this play, it's 30 yards down the field. Where is this team unity? Where is this 11 as one, 11 playing as one? It's lost. It is not here right now. The offensive line, run game, strip it down to bare bones. Give me five, six running plays. That's it. That's it. Maybe it's a paralysis by analysis thing where you're just trying to do too much and trying to achieve too much. Simplicity. Back to basics. Simple. Also, with the quarterback. Here's the play. We worked on it 20 times this week in practice. Hit your drop. It's him on the flat. Or it's him on the right to the crosser. That's it. Neither one of them's there. Back out. Run with it. Back to basics. Because, I mean, you want to talk about something that really and truly needs to be completely reset. It's this Cleveland Browns team right now. When good things happen, it kind of feels like it was a mistake by the other team. Or an accident that it happened for the Browns. Effort. Is highly a questionable thing right now with this team. Is everybody giving everything they have? And you, know, you had your team meeting last week, and you know, a lot of that is flip, flarn, and fluff, and throwing things and kicking things, and a lot of cursing and this, that, and the other thing. And it's great if it turns into something. Browns had a team meeting and basically put it in their most deplorable effort of the season to this point. So, you know, take your team meeting and shove it. Do it for yourself. Do it for your teammates. Do it for your family. Do it for your NFL future. Because a lot of people are going to look at this 2024 Cleveland Browns team the way it is currently constructed right now. And ain't nobody looking to jump in on that business. Any of their free agents? Who are you looking? Who are you salivating over right now? Anybody that's going to be off the Cleveland Browns roster at the end of the season? Nobody. It's It's so broken broken that it takes basically an absolute reset and that's why you say things like back to the basics back to the simplicity of it i have no issues with coach kevin stefanski i don't have any issues with andrew barry 
my issues are that you have a team right now that is down in a hole. And this is how you judge people. You don't judge people at their best. You judge people at their worst. And I want the people who are in a hole that are come, uh, going to come out fighting like a bunch of rabid dogs. Now, is that what's going to be how this team comes back from one and four? Yeah. You're two games out of first place in the AFC North. You still have all your conference games back. You have a chance to undo all of this. So you're going to stand up and fight like a bunch of grown-ass men? Or is all this nonsense going to continue? And what was supposed to be an historical season for the Cleveland Browns in 2024 is going to bring back, and I don't even want to hear it, but the same old, and I won't finish it, but you all know what I mean when I say same old blank. Get off the mat. Stand up. Fight for yourselves. Fight for each other. Fight as one. I'm your host, Jeff Lloyd. I appreciate everybody who makes Lockdown Browns their first listen every single day. The everyday crowd, you guys are a bunch of filthy animals and you're my filthy animals. I suggest more of you become filthy animals. Subscribe to Lockdown Browns YouTube channel. Show is always available. It is always free wherever you get your podcasts. This has been your daily delivery of all things Dog Pound. LGB on the LOB. Let's go. Browns.